Hey, y'all got him. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh. What well, good morning, folks. It's Richard Gene, the fishing machine here. Now, this morning, it is, look at it. It's about a 70% chance of rain today, so I'm taking a little gamble because I want to go fishing. I want to go fishing bad. Now, we've been having a lot of rain. I'm anchored right here in the mouth of a creek. And our target species today is channel cat. Uh, I'm anchored in eight feet of water. I'm going to be throwing into about 12 or 14. That's where I'm going to start anyway. That's where those fish should be. If they're not, they're going to be up a little bit shallower. The water is high, muddy. And right now, I'm trying to unthaw my shad. This is Skip Jack Heron right here that I'm using. I'm using a two-alt um, eagle claw hook right here, circle hook. And I have it tied with a knotless knot. This is 17-pound test leader. Leader's around two feet, probably. A swivel, and I have a quarter-ounce weight on it right now. My main line is 14-pound test line right here. I'm just fishing for channel cat. I'm fishing light, and this is a medium action rod with a uh, speed spin made by Luz. But what I'm doing is I'm fishing light so I can have fun. Um, I try to match my tackle with the species of fish that I want to catch or target. Okay, let's put these out and see what we can do. It's starting to rain right now. We, you may have to put your raincoat on. Let's cast this one. Now this one right here has 15 pound test braid. Same thing, this is a quarter ounce. I may have to go to a three eighths. It's a little, a little bit more current in here than what I expected. 17 pound test leader, that's red Cajun. And you can see that's all I'm using, just a small bait. So let's cast it on out here. I'm gonna to have to put my raincoat on here in a minute, just a short cast. Let's see if that weight's gonna hit the bottom. And it may not need to. A lot of times these fish should be suspended up three or four feet off the bottom. Especially this time of year. I believe it's gonna be okay. We're gonna try that. I'm gonna set my drag to about like that. Now I'm going to put it in the rod holder. That's usually not what goes <laughs> in them rod holders. It's usually a big, beefy rod. But now look, I'm wanting to have fun with these channel cats. Now the deal is it's possible to hook a blue right here. I have caught them here before this time of year. Every once in a while, hook him to a big blue. If I do, we'll just fight him down. We're gonna have her fun today. Now this one, I need to offset it. Let me bring it back a little closer to the boat and then let the weight hit the bottom. Okay, that's enough drag to set the hook. It don't take much. Let me move that out of the way. Okay, <clears throat> now it won't take long. If these fish are here, they're gonna start biting because this is a good spot right here. <laughs> folks, folks, this is a blue cat. This is what I was talking about. Now, them blue cat this time of year, I hit little baits like this. I mean, he peeled some light. This is a big fish right here. Oh, Clarence has got the biggest old ears I ever seen on somebody. And on the end of his earlobes, folks, there's hair. Now, he could cut them old black hair off the end of them lobes like that for people. Okay. I tell you what, this fish is a lot bigger than what I thought. A lot bigger. I turned my camera off because I don't have but about 15% left in my battery, folks. And uh, this has been just an, just like we're doing right now, just an ongoing battle 
back and forth. Uh, this is a big blue, a big blue. I've got him in the five feet of water right now. Y'all see that? That was part of him. That was just his tail. I've managed to get him over here pretty close to the bank. They ain't no trees right in here, so I'm going to try my best. Let's see if we can get a, another visual on this. Okay. Y'all see that? My goodness, he looks like a shark. He's so big. Let me lighten this up. I don't have no choice but to reach in there when he gets really, really tired, and he ain't yet. And grab him in the mouth. My net ain't big enough. Yeah. Hey, y'all got him. Okay. Oh, oh, holy bum. Oh, folks. Okay, I timed it. That fish took me one hour and 30 minutes to land. Y'all see that? That's a two alt hook. That's what I caught him on, but the other rod. See how small that bait is? The bait that I caught that fish on was identical. An hour and 30 minutes is a long time to fight a fish. And by the way, while I'm waiting on my friend to bring us some scales, we're gonna weigh this fish. This is an Akuma. Not much more than a crappie reel, okay? And a six and a half foot cherry wood, medium action rod. It's a two piece rod. An hour and 30 minutes later, massive catfish. All right, folks, we're coming towards boat ramp right now. Right up there on top of the hill is Jeff Buttram and Michael. Michael Hell, they brought us some scales right here. I called everybody in the world and nobody was at home. What I done right here is I tied this fish up to a rope. I don't want to kill him. Now he's pulling just like that on that <laughs> heavy rope. But look at that. We're going to get him up here and we're going to weigh him and see what he weighs. And then we'll, let me make sure that rope's tied real good. Wait a minute, folks. Yeah. <laughs> now these boys right here, we built all kinds of, <laughs> he's backing up to get him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> look at the baby. Look, look, folks. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> hey Richard, put that right here on these new scales because we just set them and make sure they're on zero. We fix them way this big old fish. That's gonna be perfect accurate, ain't it? Yes. It Woo! Is. Hey. That's Dog. Hey Woo! man, I'm talking Woo! about. <laughs> oh my gosh. What do you think? Well, it's hard to guess. Boy, that's like a vice, ain't it? Yeah, they'll hurt you. I mean, he hurt me bad right here. <laughs> Y'all yeah. get him? Yeah, and I go around there and look. Uh, Come here and look at him, Richard. What's it say? I'll turn it around there. Well, I'll come over there with you. We can't touch the ground. We got, we got 61 pounds. 61 pounds. Folks, I thought he'd weigh more than that. That's still big. Yeah, he's huge. Big fish for a... He's huge. Golly, I thought he was about 70 or more. You skin him up. Still, he's big. That's the biggest I ever seen. Golly. Whoa. Yeah. I want you to look. There he is. Look at that. Look at there, folks. <laughs> That's how big it is. Golly, What buddy. made it impressive is 15-pound line. That was hard to do. You got that on 15-pound line? Yeah, I'm going to him up like a 15-pound okay. line. Woo, woo. <laughs> All right, folks, let's let him go. He's tore my hands out of pieces. Woo! Let's see what he does right there. <laughs> he give out, ain't he? Yeah, he's give out. An hour, 30 minutes of fat with 15 pound line. That'll give him out oh, worse than heavy line. 
hill. There you go. They're tough. There they go. <laughs> they're like a shark, don't they? Like he's about. Well, my goodness. <sighs> <laughs> Where'd he go? Yeah. Oh, no, what is it? Oh, oh, me. Woo! Yeah. This boat's a muddy mess. My adrenaline kicked in a little bit too much, probably, folks, but my friends, they done left. They had stuff to do. Uh, and I do too. I just want to try to catch one more. Now, it's doubtful that I'll catch another fish that big. I mean, uh, with the tackle that I have, if I were to hook one right now, it'd be past dark. But let's see if we can catch another fish or two. I mean, I just couldn't leave. That just, it gives me adrenaline rushes. Okay, it's just that simple. I get adrenaline rushes. That just goes to show how strong a trialing knot is or a palomar. That's the reason why I use them. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put a trialing knot in here. Now, on braid, a lot of knots will slip, folks, but a trialing knot and a palomar knot won't. And I go around several times. I don't know. I probably went seven or eight times right there. Those two knots are dependable. I mean, I wouldn't tell y'all lie for nothing. And I always leave a pretty good tag in. Now here's you a good knot. If you got a spool like this, these quarter pound spools, if you'll take that line, loop it over like this, okay? Go through the loop and back through there again. That's a good way to stow that line, keep that line from going everywhere. That's just a little trick right there. So let's get us a hook. Eagle Claw Laser Sharp Circle C's. That's a two all. Two all hook. See, I'm really, <laughs> like I told y'all, I was really set up to catch Channel Cat. But obviously, there's a few blues in here. But here's the knotless knot. I've shown this before. We'll watch that rod there while we're tying it because it can go off any time. I go through the front like that, leave about a half inch of tag line, and then just wrap that around about seven times. That's a lucky number. Take the other end of your line and just go through the back side like that. Now you can see the pressure points right here on the front side of the hook. That's perfect for a circle hook. When that fish takes off with it, he'll just hook himself now, boom, like that every time if he gets the bait in his mouth. And this is still Skip Jack Heron that we're using. That's it. That's what we're going to try. I went to a little bigger bait, y'all noticed. Y'all see that? I want y'all to look. That fish done hooked itself. <clears throat> you know, that's a pretty good fish right there. He's coming to me. Now that is fun on this light, light stuff, folks. Matching that's a channel cat too, I believe. Yep. Well, they're here. I don't know how thick they are because it took about, probably about 20 minutes to get that bite. I was thinking, where's my next move at? That was a little bit slow, really, to sit here for, for that. But they may come on in here. You never know. They're just moving around, milling around. But he hooked himself. I think the key to these channel cats, when you have them in rod holders like this, or just fishing for channels anyway, see, I can't do nothing with him. He's a pretty good-sized channel cat. 
is the small hooks. They don't have that big of a mouth. So a two, three aught circle hook, a small bay to get it done. You want to really catch channel cat. That's just my opinion, but golly, they're so stout. <laughs> they are. A cone up here. Oh, mate. So there's the first channel cat of the day. Nice one, too. Let's lay him right there and we'll unhook him. Got him right there. I didn't have to do anything. When he hit it, he hit it <laughs> hard. I did have to do one thing, though. I had to adjust my... I had to take off that one-eighth ounce weight. And uh, I went to a quarter ounce egg weight. That one-eighth ounce just wouldn't hold it. It was coming up on top of the water because there's a little bit of trash going down through here, and it just picked it up on top of the water almost. So, But ain't that nice? Light tackle matching the fish you're catching. Quit. That fish give us a tussle. Let's let him go. Can't see him swim off. Ain't no doubt about it. Now, I have in here vacuum sealed skip jack herring, and I also have some gizzard shad in here. And I caught that fish on a piece of skip jack herring. Either one will work, conditions like this, but I'm just cutting a cross section of this skip jack like that. Not a very big bait at all. Real small. Let's get rid of this right here. fin there small bait you don't need a big one well that's a pretty good size bait really for a channel cat you could even go smaller and I'm hooking it about like that nothing fancy right here I just hope that I can I'm still I know I'm fishing on the drop off but I was in a great place right there but we'll see. They could be some fish right here, too. And the main thing is, when you're using a rod holder like this, there's no need, when you when you get bit, to run over there and grab that rod. Because, like I say, if he takes away from you, that cir goes away from you, that circle hook will do the job better than you can fishing like this, especially in where you have current. Because what they're going to do... They're going to smell that bait. They're going to come up the current, grab the bait, and they're going to go straight back down. Usually is what they do. Hey, there's the same rod down again. Yep, I'm in a good place right here. That's a channel. Let's get him away from that other line right there. Golly. Coming to the top. There's so much current right here that they're just coming straight up to the top like a big blue wood. This fish here ain't near as big as that other one was. Well, I'm positioned right right here. Let's see if it's a channel. Yeah, it's a channel cat. Man, I tell you what. Watch that rod right that rod right there got bit a while ago. Something pecked it. I don't I don't believe it was a catfish. Probably a little drum or something like that. Come on in here. That's number two. Oh man. And that took about five minutes. Five or six minutes. And I was hooked up right here from this from this position. I'm in a better shape right here. Okay. Kind of, I'm kind of in an eddy, just throwing out in that current on the drop. They're traveling. That's where they're traveling. Um, simple. Simple when you find them. You got to get on them. But you can see that hook is right there, right in the corner of his mouth. Now, I don't eat catfish. I don't eat catfish at all. Um, a lot, most people do, and I realize they're a good eating fish if you like them. I just don't like the, the taste of them. I've tried them all kinds of different ways, but uh, I love to catch them. 
they're a sporty fish that's a nice one another nice one I believe the other one was just a little bit bigger than that but you can see they got small mouths that's why I like that a uh, two three out hook is big enough in my opinion for channels was a pretty quick bite so I expect another one here pretty quick let's let him go all right folks I'm fixing to get out of here it is cold and it is windy the temperatures drop into where I can't even feel my face I mean that's probably a good thing but I had a ball out here uh, despite the weather the cold it's just a blessing to be out here the great outdoors fishing is a sport second to none I can't overemphasize that you never know what will happen. And uh, first of all, I want to give a special shout out to Baby Jeff and Baby Mike for coming all the way down here weighing that big catfish. I thought that fish was a lot heavier than what it was, but it, maybe it's because it was such a long, intense battle using that little 15-pound line that made it feel that way. But it was certainly a lot of work and... Um, that was a lot of fun I tell you and also real briefly I want to give a special shout out to Eli Walston uh, Joe Walston or it's Job one of the others J-O-B Job I guess Coral Walston um, uh, from Fife Alabama now you deer hunters let me mention this if you want to see an eight pointer with upper teeth fangs yeah like a so a saber tooth tiger then google that up um it's uh the deer was killed in fife alabama and uh it was an eight pointer with fangs you can google that up fife alabama special shout out to those kids um i want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for the great comments. Hey. Doggone it. I'm talking about doggone dirt. Whoa. And remember, go fishing when you can. Oh, my coffee. Dirt first.